Yeah. What what you have is the holes back here in the back and the ones in the front are pretty much guaranteeing that the odor's escaping there. That is the substance. You saw the dog in the video take her nose and pop it to the holes. She's realized that that's the substance. That's as close as she can get without getting to it. And when she does, we create a little bit of a game. Okay? We have to know that the odor's coming out of that. That's the reason we put so much contraband in there enough. And we know that it's been in that container and permeated. We know that the odor's coming out of there. But the only place they're going to get paid is right here. And they know. They know the difference in being a couple of feet from it and being to it. If they're going to it all the time, then there's not a gray area. If they think they can be a certain distance away, it starts getting real gray. The, the kicker here, when we drop that ball, if, if we entice a little bit of a game, you know, so be it. That's the only reason that it's there. As we see her coming in, she's all about having the ball. He's going to clip her up to the flat collar so that we don't have any corrective type uh, things going on. When she sees the other ball, because she has game, she's going to drop that one and want to engage in the game. So, when she comes up, we're going to draw her to the wrong box. Here we go. Where's the ball? Leash. Leash. Come around the other side. And she's getting the game right there. A little more slack. Back up over here. Every time she comes into the box, it's very important that we create a little bump or a little fight there. Don't pull the dog's head up into the box and rupture the nose. Then we start having avoidance. But you see how she's staying there. Now if we give her a little more slack, no big deal. She knows where this game is. So much so that when I try to push her back away from the game, she gets a little frustrated by that. She says, no, this is my game. What's present? The fight, the game, the reward object, and the contraband. The contraband and the reward object are never hidden together where the dog thinks he finds both. This is what the dog's after with the game. It should have nothing to do with how they smell anywhere else. All right, back to the starting point. When she leaves there, the game's over with. Watch her actions. Watch, watch what she does. Why is she drop? Game. Cue her. Cue her. Only there, not the eyes, not the ears, only there. Back up. We're going to put this here to manipulate the dog's environment. If she tries to get away, the leash stops her. It's not for a correction device, it's simply to manipulate the dog's environment. She can't go any further back. To where when she gets used to it, let it go. It's no longer even necessary. And I'm keeping my hand above so that you can see when I put the tension. If she backs up, I'm going to give in. 
when she comes close, I'm going to move out. Boom. Okay? That keeps the string with only so much slack in it to where when she is in the right place, I can create that little tug or that little fight. That's what the reward is, not the damn ball. And I'll start toying with her a little bit. That rabbit's still alive a little bit. That game is still alive a little bit. And you'll find that they'll camp out there and stay there, right there in the source. Get on back. Get out of here. Go on. And now I have to pick up the leash and pull her back away from the source because she's not going to leave her game. When the handler itself starts trying to hoss the dog away from it, he's creating a sort of a game. And all of a sudden they start kicking the hell out of the dog. All it wants is the game. We think it's after the pipe or after the ball. It is not. And the only time if it gets a, if, if the only time it gets a game is wrestling with the handler for the reward, yeah, they're going to become possessive of it and try to keep it. And then what do we do? Start kicking their ass? Now watch her get frustrated. There's no game. And the longer she does it, the more it increases the likelihood. Now two things are happening here. She's getting the game she wants on a variable schedule. She's staying long enough and the odor's coming out of there and that's where this game is happening. At one-on-one -on -one marijuana lane. The party's not happening down the street. And how much influence from the handler? Now he can praise her if he wants to. Beforehand, no. That's good. Mm. All right, back to the starting point. At the moment he takes her away, I'm going to release the fight. The fight's over with. I know that because this dog wants to fight, what it's going to do with that ball so that it can continue the game. I'm going to tease her pretty diligently. Eyes and ears. Here we go. Regan. Go. Eyes and ears. Odor. Good point. When he starts getting to where I think it's memory that he's going on, I'm going to move him around. Absolutely. Yes, did you see the cue? Okay, watch closely the next time. Here we go. Go ahead. If I drop the ball because somebody had too short of arms making the string, just let it go. Here we go. Cue. The variable. How long is it going to take me to get there? The constant is that I will. The constant is that's the odor of the substance. The constant is that's a dog. The constant is that's a mediocre handler. An excellent dog. See her putting her feet on the string? What's she trying to do? Create her own game? That's good. Right there. Turn around face me. Pull her up slightly, which has become a cue for her to let it go. Grab the ball and go put her up. Lord, can you tell me?